recognize this guy? Of course. <laughs> who hasn't got a remote control to control who knows what in their house these days? The remote controls have a little LED on them. We don't see them because they're infrared. The interesting thing though, did you know that a camera can see them? So I can point this at the camera that I'm using to film this right now and you should see the light blink when I push the volume control. Well, there's nothing new about that. We've been using LEDs to control things for a long time. But do you know that there are hams all over the world that are communicating with LEDs? And I'm not just talking about sending a light across the room. No, these guys are sending light from a single LED 10, 15, 20 miles. And they're transmitting in CW, Morse code, digital data, and even voice. I thought that sounds like a pretty interesting thing to do, so I've decided I'm going to give it a try, and I'm going to document my progress with a series of videos. This is part one in the series of nanowave communications. Take a look. Hey everybody, welcome back. I've got something over here I want to show you. I just picked these up. These are high-powered, high-intensity LEDs that I just got from LED Supply. This is a deep red LED, runs at about 700 milliamps, and it can be really bright. Let's light one of these up. Well, as you can see, this is quite a small device, but it generates a tremendous amount of light, and in doing so, it also creates a lot of heat. So in order to use one of these Luxion Lux Drive LEDs, we need to add a heat sink. So a friend of mine, Art, works for a company that recycles computers, and he tears out old parts and collects some of them. So I got a nice heat sink from him, but uh, we've got to clean this up a little bit, remove stuff that's on the back of this, so that we can mount our uh, little Luxar star to a heat sink. To do that, we're going to use some rubbing alcohol. That should get the surface cleaned up. And then you can learn the neatest things on YouTube. I saw a video where a guy was working on this, and to clean it up, he used a coffee filter. It's very lint-free, and I'm going to give it a try. We'll see how it works. I'll clean this all off and we'll get back to you when I'm done. We'll clean the back of the, uh, the little Lux Star as well using the alcohol. Get that clean and uh, we're ready to mix up our compound. I'll be using this two-part compound from Arctic Silver. It's called Arctic Aluminum and I'll be mixing it here. I've got my name tag from the ARRL Tapper BCC conference in Chicago this year. I use this to mix the compound on so that you can see it better. I'll insert a little card here. And I will put a little bit of part A down here. Doesn't take much. The first step they say in the directions online is to tin the back of the heat sink, which will fill in all of the little cracks and crevices of the heat sink. So we put two equal parts of this mixture and now we'll stir them together, mix them up. They say to mix them up for about 30 seconds. We'll just keep going here and uh, edit the film so you don't have to wait the full 30 seconds. Okay, well we've been going quite some time now. We actually have a full five minutes that we can work with this compound. Now what I'm going to do is apply this to the surface of the heat sink like this. Get a bunch of it on there. And then I'm taking a, just an old plastic card here, one of these shopper courtesy cards that you get all the time from all the stores, and I'm going to spread this around 
the heat sink is a lot bigger than the the LED star but I'm just going to keep spreading this back and forth in here and the idea is that I'm filling in all the little cracks and crevices that you might see in there. So that's done there. Next we're going to take a little dab, won't take much, of the same compound. I'm going to put it right here in the center. And then I'll take my star and we'll place that right on top. Press that down. Now I got out this washer from my garage which I could lay on top of this that allows me to add a lot of pressure here without crushing the LED in the center. That kind of squishes it out a little bit. You can see the compound is starting to come around here. I'm going to take a little bit of electrical tape and I'm going to wrap that around my washer so that it's a little smoother and cleaner. I'll cut out the hole and we're going to put a clamp on this thing and let it sit overnight. That thermal compound sets up pretty hard in about five minutes but the manufacturer tells us we should let it sit for at least 24 hours before we apply any significant amount of heat to it. While we're waiting for that to cure, I'm going to load up Fritzing and lay out a circuit that I'm going to use to drive that LED. My plan is to write a sketch using the Arduino IDE and then put that into a chip which will be on my own board. So I'm going to create what might be considered my own Arduino clone. Watch how I do that here in a video that's been sped up four times. It takes only a surprisingly few number of parts to build your own Arduino clone. These red wires will be used to bring 5 volts into various pins on the Atmega 328 chip. Now we'll bring in ground. We'll make that black. This diagonal line is actually going to be a wire that goes on the bottom side of the board. This is a 1000 ohm resistor that we use to pull pin 1 up to 5 volts. Pin 1 is the reset pin. I'm linking the two ground rails on both sides of the boards by running lines through the little push button switch in the middle. If you want to know the details of what's going on here, you can watch a complete 16 minute video of this segment run at normal time. You'll see what I'm doing and why and what all these parts are for. Now I'm going to bring in some headers so we can hook other devices up to the board. These first two sets are for programming it. I can hook it right up to an Arduino Uno. This one here will go to our Buck Puck LED driver. And this one here provides the two pins that go to the LED itself. I've just put a little solder on two of the pads here of the Luxiod Star. My plan is to put a pin on here and I've got these 90 degree pins that I could work with. I'm going to pull one of the neighbor pins out so that it's uh, not so close and we'll just solder this guy right to this pad. Then, let's hold this down and pull the strip off. Leave just the pin sitting there. I'll do the same to the other pad. Now I have
have two pins that I can use to hook the LED up to the driver. Finally, I've got this little lens that will fit on right on top. It's a culminating lens that will narrow the field of the LED. So, we're getting ready to try this out. Here's our board. Got it all set up and built. Pretty much like we laid it out in the fritzing. Let's fire this thing up. Let's get it going. So, I color coded the pins for the LED there. I put some white fingernail polish on one there. So, I'll make sure that I get the polarity right as it goes over here to the LED. My little buck puck plugs in right here. So, that's ready to go. And then I have a little plug right here that goes in there. And so, I've written a little sketch. It should blink our LED three times, then pause for three seconds, then blink at it again three times. Just do that over and over again. I'll add the power, and we'll see how she goes. We get our three blinks and our delay. So, okay. It seems like uh, we've got this part of the project up and running pretty good. Everything looks like it's running fine at first, but then it starts to fail. Let me explain. In order to program the Atmega chip when it's in my board, I set some pins here and I have my Arduino Uno over here with the Atmega chip removed from it. So the way this works is I run a lead from reset over here on the Arduino to pin 1 on my Atmega chip. And then from here where we have the RX and TX pins, I take those and I hook those up to the RX and TX pins on my chip over here. These are pins 1, 2, and 3 all in an order. Let me try again. I missed the middle one when I tried to put those on. Okay, they're in now. And then finally, we'll bring in the 5 volts and ground from the Arduino. I have these set up so I get the polarity right here. And I'll tap that in there. So I won't be using the power, my power supply down here. I'm going to use just the power from the Arduino Uno to program this chip. And so then I just simply plug this in and then upload a sketch. The sketch will come into the, the chip and it'll run. And you saw it running just fine, but watch what happens. I'll remove the power from the Arduino and I'll hook up the power this way. Now our LED is blinking. We see it blink three times. But we're going to just let this run for a few minutes. And then we'll start to see something bizarre happen. Look at that. That was five blinks, not three. And now, that was seven or eight blinks. We're, and now it's just blinking and blinking and blinking. How can this be? Well, the truth of the matter is, I did a lot of research and a lot of studying, and I came to the conclusion that this puck really can't produce enough power to drive my chip. I think I'm to blame on this fail. I got a little too enthusiastic about some of the documentations that I found online about the Buck Puck LED drivers. Let me show you. Down here in the description you'll see that it tells us that we should be able to power our microcontroller chip from the reference pin on the Buck Puck. It says it puts out 5 volts but I should have read a little further. It says 5 volts at up to 20 milliamps of current. I checked. Our Atmega 328 chip is going to require a lot more than that. Here's how I solved the problem. We'll take the buck puck off so you can see. I've installed a 7805 voltage regulator chip down here on the bottom of the board. I've added a couple of filtering capacitors, one here and one there. This one's on the input. This one is on the output of the voltage regulator. I removed the jumper pin that we had going from the buck puck's reference pin 
to the 5 volt rail on the board and replaced it now with another jumper on the bottom of the board. This jumper takes the input voltage and brings it down to the input of the 7805. And now I have a board that works just fine. In the next video in this series, we're going to experiment with seeing how we can go about using the board that we've created here to drive our LED with audio frequency signals from the set mega chip. We'll experiment with the Arduino tone function and we'll also experiment with pulse width modulation. I hope you'll join us. Of course, all of us YouTube content providers really appreciate it when you push that little like button right down here. And if you haven't already done it, subscribe.